I don't think we really know mechanisms of resistance for VEGF inhibition. This is a very hot area of research. Why patients would initially respond to either bevacizumab or ramucirumab uh, and do well for a long period of time and then their tumors grow, I think this is something we need more work with. Whether it's some sort of immunosuppressive in tumor microenvironment, the VEGF gets upregulated, that creates a cold tumor that allows these drugs not to work anymore. Um, this is, we, we know very little about some of the mechanisms of resistance to either chemotherapy alone, immunotherapy, and anti-angiogenesis drugs. We know more about targeted therapy mechanisms of resistance, but very little is known. This is an area where we need more work so that we can come up with rational strategies uh, to address these mechanisms of resistance that can translate into meaningful improvements in outcomes for patients. I think the nice thing about anti-angiogenesis strategies is that they may partner well with a lot of different novel agents because I think VEGF is at the, the underpinning of a lot of tumor growth, no matter if it's an EGFR mutant lung cancer patient, an ALK rearranged lung cancer, or a patient without an actionable mutation. So there's a lot of rationale why, why using an anti-angiogenesis drug with a checkpoint inhibitor may work. VEGF in and of itself is immunosuppressive. It upregulates T regulatory cells, which in and of themselves are immunosuppressive. It upregulates myeloid derived suppressor cells, which are immunosuppressive. It decreases T cell trafficking. So, by inhibiting VEGF with an anti angiogenesis drug, you may reverse that immunosuppression that may allow the uh, checkpoint inhibitor to work better, essentially augmenting the chances or, or augmenting the responses with immunotherapy. So there is a lot of preclinical rationale why using checkpoint inhibitors with anti-angiogenesis drugs may be very beneficial. We have very little data on this. We do have some with the EMPOWER trial, but we're gonna learn more and more with this clinical IO therapy, immunotherapy blitz that's coming out. Many of these strategies are looking at anti-angiogenesis with, with with our anti-VEGF with a checkpoint inhibitor, either with a PD-1 drug or a PD-L1 drug. There's a lot of preclinical rationale while adding an anti-angiogenesis drug or anti-VEGF drug may work with an EGFR TKI. Th these drugs, at least pr uh, uh, clinically, the, in the data that we have so far, have synergy. Adding bevacizumab to erlotinib um, improves progression-free survival in every single study we've seen. Well, it may not improve overall survival, uh, I think we, we think that there is potential synergy of, of looking at uh, VEGF and the EGFR pathway and looking at TKIs and anti-angiogenesis drugs, uh, again, that may enhance tumor responses and lead to better outcomes for patients. While I'm not a fan of, of anti-angiogenesis drugs, just combining it with more chemotherapy, I think Targeted therapy combinations and, and, and immunotherapy combinations are really exciting. Uh, and, and the preclinical data we have supporting this is strong. And the clinical observations we've seen uh, have also been meaningful. So I, I, we'll have to see. I, I think if you ask me this next year at ASCO, I think I would have a different answer. I think there will be updated information that will tell us whether these drugs work or not in combination with targeted therapy or immunotherapy.